Now, let me say this, because I've been getting questions about these black male life coaches, these uncredentialed, uncertified, untrained, YouTubian black male life coaches. I'm not here to knock nobody. I don't know how anybody feeds their children. I don't know how they keep a roof over their head. I don't know. I don't know how they keep food in their body. I'm not here to knock anybody's hustle. I'm not here to knock anybody's hustle because I don't know how they feed their children. I've had people try to destroy my profession, my professional career as a certified school psychologist, my professional career as a clinician and a therapist. I've had people try to destroy that because they didn't agree with my political platform. I've had people try to destroy that. So I will never attack another black man's ability to feed his family. Even with the gangster rappers, I will not attack their ability to feed their family. But I do want to say this to the black women out there. I'm disappointed in a lot of my sisters. I am disappointed in a lot of black women because I thought that our sisterhood was evolving to a place that would not tolerate. I thought black sisterhood was evolving to a place that would not tolerate slander and degradation of black women on any level for any reason. I thought black sisters that you guys were getting to a place, you sisters, you queens, my beautiful black goddesses, I thought you all were evolving to a place where you would not approve of Eurocentric slander and degradation and debasement and undo attacks on your integrity as a black woman. But I'm seeing black women out of their thirst for male validation entertain some of these Negroes who have no history of organizing in the black community. They have no history of fighting for our children. They have no activism resume at all. Why would you subject yourself to that level of insult? Why would you subject yourself to that level of degradation and undue criticism from a complete stranger? Because you're looking for male validation. That's why we need the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. See, when this gym is fully restored, when this gym is fully restored, I'm going to offer some sisterhood circles. Dr. Umar is going to offer some sisterhood circles right inside of this gymnasium. I'm going to offer some sisterhood circles right inside this gymnasium where I'm going to speak positivity and strength to our black women. I'm going to speak positivity. The sun has come out. Woohoo! Woo! Mama Oshun is here, baby. Mama Oshun is here. Oh, Rumila is here. Look at the sun. It just rained cats and dogs. And now look, the sun is shining on the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. The sun is shining. When we have our cookout, we're going to put a bunch of benches and tables out here for the cookout. We're going to have a lot of benches and tables right here in the Anna Douglas Amy Garvey Park. We're going to have a lot of benches out here in the Anna Douglas and Amy Garvey Park, brothers and sisters. But I'm going to have a lot of. This is your campus. Thank you for helping me buy this for our children. This is going to be the center of black organizing in North America as soon as the renovations are done. But we're going to have some sisterhood circles. Dr. Umar is going to host some sisterhood circles where I can speak power and strength into black women. 
I'm going to speak power and strength. This is the Frederick Douglass High School you're looking at. I'm going to speak power and strength into our beautiful African sisters. That's right. I'm going to build you up. And what makes it so bad about these uh, so-called life coaches, some of them actually regurgitate a lot of Dr. Umar talking points. People send me clips. People send me clips of some of these YouTubian opportunist so-called life coaches. And I'm seeing some of them quote me verbatim without giving credit to their source. And some of them claim to not even like me. So why are you quoting my material and not referencing me? You obviously watch me. You obviously watch me because too much of my material is coming out of your mouth. It's a whole group. There's at least 12. I think I've counted 12 different YouTubian beta male wannabe life coaches that are out there slandering black women, attacking black women, degrading black women. I count about a dozen. I'm going to call them the dirty dozen of division. The triple D, the dirty dozen of division. There's about 12 members of the dirty dozen of division, 12 beta males, YouTube life coaches who are trying to build a platform by making black women feel bad. I don't like it. I, I, I can't appreciate black men trying to make a dollar off of making black women feel bad. And unfortunately, our black women, some of them are so thirsty for validation that they're participating. They're participating in the attacks and slander against the black female community and that's not acceptable that's not acceptable no black women should ever subject herself even for amusement even for amusement even for amusement the black woman should never subject herself to another man's condemnation and what makes the condemnation so ridiculous for me it's mostly superficial most of the assessment is superficial, brothers and sisters. It's superficial. You weigh too much. You don't have the right body type. You don't have enough education. You don't make enough money. This is European standards. This isn't African. That's not who we are. And black women are subjecting themselves for this because they want a black man so bad to publicly validate them. They're taking a chance at being totally humiliated because they're so thirsty to have a black man publicly validate them. That's why you're doing this, black woman. See, I want you to understand and understand and overstand the same reason you go on these you two being beta male so-called life coaching platforms. The same reason you go on these you two being beta male so-called life coaching platforms is the same reason you stay in abusive relationships. It's the same reason black women stay in abusive relationships. It's the same reason black women stay. Why do black women stay in a relationship where she's being exploited sexually, emotionally, or financially. Why doesn't the black woman leave? Talk to me, black women. We're talking about the unconscious psychology of abuse of our sisters. We're talking about the unconscious psychology of why black women would rather stay. Because a lot of black women feel that if a man does not validate me, I'm not good enough as a woman. And some of our sister self-esteem are so low that they will stay with any man just to feel like a woman. That's where this comes from, black woman. That's why I'm working on my For Sisters Only Relationships and Dating book right now. That's why I'm working on my For Sisters Only Relationships and Dating book right now because I want you sisters to understand what makes you get on YouTube and let a man destroy you like that. 
What makes you get on YouTube and reveal your private business to an absolute stranger? What makes you get into a relationship and let a man walk all over you? This is that fatherlessness. This is that fatherless little girl inside of you that cries out for validation by any means necessary. This is the abused little girl inside of you whose father wasn't there to pour love and pour strength and pour abundance into your soul. And now you're running around looking for validation and you will let the most unqualified and uncertified. You will let the most unqualified and uncertified. You will let the most unqualified and uncertified YouTube and beta male tear you apart in front of your peers. Because you just hoping that this one time you will get publicly validated. And you think that if you get publicly validated, if you think that you are get publicly validated, you might feel better about yourself. And I'm here to tell you that the mind loves to play tricks on you. Your mind loves to play tricks on you. That's right. Your mind wants you to think that if you can get one of these YouTube and beta males to validate you publicly, your self-esteem will go up, but it won't. These are the games the unconscious plays on your mind, black woman. These are the games that your unconscious plays on your mind, black woman. Don't let your mind play games on you. Don't let that little girl inside of you who was victimized as a child. Don't let that little girl inside of you that was victimized by your first husband. Don't let that little girl inside of you that was sexually assaulted or physically assaulted by her mother's boyfriend. Don't let the pain of that little girl. Don't let the pain of your inner child, black woman. Don't let the inner child run your life. See, black woman, I want you to understand something. When you read for sister's only book, you're going to learn about that little girl that every black woman got living inside of her. And that little girl is scarred and hurt. All of what you've been through as a little girl, all the sexual molestations you've been through as a little girl, the sexual abuse and exploitations you've been through as a little girl, the relationships you've been in that did not turn out right. That little girl in you is trying to heal, but she doesn't know how to heal. So she's motivating you to get involved in dysfunctional relationships and dysfunctional situations to get your unmet needs met. That's right. When you find yourself going on these YouTube platforms to let uncredentialed, uncertified people when you go on these YouTube platforms to let uncredentialed strangers evaluate you, that's the little girl in you. That's the little girl in you crying out for validation. And I'm telling you, sister, if your father is still alive, if your father figure is still alive, if your uncle or grandfather is still alive, if you have a pastor, who ain't trying to get in your panties. If you have a pastor who ain't trying to get in your panties, you can have a conversation with a man who doesn't have a sexual interest in you. You can have a conversation with a man who doesn't have a sexual interest in you to help get those unmet needs. See, every woman in the world, but we're talking about our queens. Every woman in the world, but we're talking about our queens. Every woman in the world needs a man who loves her without any interest of sexual intercourse. Listen to me well, black woman. In order for you to be healthy, you have to have a man you can go to and get emotional healing and support. And that man is so secure in his manhood and so in control of his hormones and his root chakra. See, black men, we got to get our root chakras under control. The black man has to get his root chakra. Black men, the reason why some of us are so hypersexual is our root chakra is out of control. We have to get our root chakras under control if we really want to serve the black sisterhood. I'm going to say it again. We got to get our root chakras under control so that we can be of better use to our women. 
because every black woman needs a man that she can depend on for emotional support that doesn't lead to sexual abuse. And I'm using sexual abuse in the general sense, not having sexually raped or anything, but having sex with a woman who really don't need sex can be a form of sex abuse. Having sex with a woman who really don't need sex, who's looking for love, that can be considered a form of sexual abuse, brothers and sisters. And so black men have to get our root chakras under control so when sisters come to us, we can say to ourselves, not to her, this is a beautiful sister, but she don't need me for that. She don't need me for that. She need me to be a man right now. She needs me to be a non-sexual man. She needs masculine energy that does not have any sexual agenda tied to it. Women often need masculine energy love and emotion that doesn't have any physical intimacy tied to it. And I'm going to say this to all the black men listening. I'm going to say this to all the black men listening. I'm going to say this to all the black men listening. Until you are strong enough to love a woman without sticking your Shango stick. Until you can say, Dr. Umar, I know some women who are beautiful and got a lot going for them. But because I know I don't really mean them no good, or because I know they really looking for a husband right now and not just a friend, or because I know I have enough women on my rotation as it is, because I know I have enough queens in my queendom, although I would love to experience this sister, I'm going to be a real alpha male today. I'm going to be a real alpha male today, and I am not going to let that sister walk into a trap where she's looking for masculine validation, but ends up getting taken advantage of by another male. I'm going to let her know, sister, I'm not going to sleep with you. You're beautiful, you're drop dead gorgeous, but I know you're looking for more, and because I know you're looking for more, I'm never going to touch you. We are never going to go there. I'm going to be the man you can come to when you need to have a conversation about other men. I'm going to be the man you can come to and get a hug, a real tight hug, and it not lead to nothing else. Black men, part of being masculine is being able to turn that root chakra down, turn down that root chakra energy and just be a brother to a sister in order to be an alpha male in my definition. Part of being an alpha male Part of being an alpha male is being emotionally available to black women in need of positive masculinity without it leading to a sexual escapade. Part of being an alpha male in my definition, in my definition, part of being an alpha male in my definition is being emotionally available to a woman without Allowing the relationship to descend into an empty sexual escapade. That's where we got to get black men. America has made us too hypersexual. America has made us too hypersexual. America has made us as black men, all men, but I'm talking to my brothers. America has made us hypersexual. And ever since slavery, 400 years, the black man has been trained to sexually objectify the black woman. For 400 years, the black man has been trained by the slave master to sexually objectify the black woman's body and the black woman herself. For some of us, the black woman is nothing more than an object of sexual satisfaction. For many of us, the black woman is nothing more than an object of sexual satisfaction. That comes from the slave empire. That is part of post-traumatic slavery disease. If you are a black man and the main worth of a woman to you is her sexual abilities, then you suffer from post-traumatic slavery disease. Now, don't get me wrong. Black women are gorgeous. I love five, five thick in the thighs. 
I love a curvy, conscious, nappy headed, intelligent, can throw down in the kitchen black woman. Oh, yes, I love a beautiful black woman. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. I am a man with the urges and instincts of any other African man. But at the same time, the, 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 the God in me, the deity in me, the divine in me dictates that I control that root chakra and control those natural urges towards reproduction when I see a sister who needs more than that. And a true alpha male, a true alpha male can say, you know what? Not this time. Not this time, not under these circumstances. I'm going to be a source of masculine support for this black woman, no matter how beautiful and single she is. And I'm not going to let it turn into a useless sexual escapade where she goes home feeling used and abused. I'm not talking about a sister who is only interested in having a friend. That's different. If a sister just wants a friend and, that, and she's cool with that, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about sisters who you know are thirsty for a husband, thirsty for a meaningful relationship, thirsty for a long-term relationship, and you are not the one to give it to her. Can you just stand by her as a brother? Can you be the shoulder she needs to cry on once in a while? Can you be the brother that gives her to the hug once in a while? See, the reason why some of the coons in the chat, the reason why some of the beta males in the chat can't understand, overstand, or understand what I'm talking about. The reason why some of you beta males in the chat can't understand, overstand, and understand what I'm talking about is you have been mentored by beta males who have positioned the black woman as their enemy. You have been mentored by beta males who have raised you to believe the black woman is your problem i had a beta male say earlier dr umar black women been in charge of the black community for 60 years no she hasn't she the white man has been in charge of the black community for 400 years the black woman is only a manager of the black community and the only reason why she is a manager of the black community is because the war against black men which is waged by the white man is sending us to the prison and to the cemetery so the black woman had to step in and assu assume that role the black woman don't want to be the damn alpha male in your house the black woman don't want to be going crazy raising your children the black woman don't want to be crazy teaching her daughter about sex and dating and pregnancy and birth control and STDs. Do you really think the black woman wouldn't rather be doing something else? Do you really think she want to be working two and three jobs to get the bills paid because your ass is locked up or dead? And I'm not blaming you, black man. It's a war on us. But what I'm telling you, stop making the black woman the scapegoat for the white man. And if you feel that you have to make the black woman the scapegoat for the white man, then why don't you just be honest and say, listen, I'm scared of my oppressor. I'm scared of the white man. I don't want to challenge him. I don't want to fight him. I'm scared of my oppressor, so I'm just going to blame my sister. I'm scared of the white man, so I'm just going to blame the black woman. That's what you really, that's the truth. Tell the truth. You scared of the white man, so you're just going to blame the black woman. Can we tell the truth? Can we tell the truth? Because that's all you beta males are doing, trying to make the black woman the scapegoat for what the white man has done to you. The black woman does not control the school system. The black woman does not control the criminal justice system. The black woman does not control the legal system. She does not control the economy. Just tell the truth. You have been mentored by beta males who have made the black woman the scapegoat for what the white man has done to you because you are afraid to challenge your oppressor. That's why when the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy is open, there will be code of conduct on this campus. There will be a code of conduct at the Frederick Douglass High School. There will be a code of conduct at the Marcus Garvey Elementary School. There will be a code of conduct at the Nat Turner and Jean Jacques Dessalines Gymnasium. Black power. Yes, sir. 
Shout out to Wilmington, Delaware for standing by the prince. And black woman, I want all my black women to know something right now. I am not condoning your bullshit. My beautiful African queens, I'm talking to you right now. I'm not condoling your bullshit. Because some black women are on some bullshit. Some of you play keep away with the kids. Some of you take good men to child support who was already taking care of their kids. Some of you will bring good brothers into your life and you use them as an emotional crutch just to get your baby daddy or ex-husband to pay attention to you. I am not condoning the bullshit of black women. I am not saying that the black... I am not saying that the black woman does not have faults because the black woman has faults just like the black man has faults. But I am concerned about the example that black men are sending to young black boys right now in this country. I am concerned about the message that black men are sending to young black boys in this country when a 16 year old girl gets four shots to her heart. When a 16 year old girl gets four shots to her heart in Columbus, Ohio, and a whole bunch of weak ass, no backbone having beta males will get on the Internet and defend a white policeman. We'll defend a white policeman who shot four bullets into the stomach of a 16 year old black girl. I cannot. I cannot condone that. No damn beta males. All these young brothers out here claiming to be masculine. All these young brothers out here claiming to be masculine. And all you're doing is attacking women. I'm seeing entire threads on social network of black men talking about everything wrong with black women. That's not how we act, brother. White people are watching this shit. White people are watching this. They are watching you attack your sister on a public platform. Do you really think if a black cop put four bullets in a 16-year-old white girl holding a knife, do you think any white man would be defending a black cop? Let me ask you again. If a, if a black cop put six bullets in a white girl holding a knife, if a black cop put six, four bullets in a white girl holding a knife, if a black cop put four bullets into the heart of a white girl holding the knife, do you think any white man would be on social media defending the black cop who murdered the 16-year-old white girl? What's wrong with us? That's why at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy, we're going to have a code. We're going to have a code. When you walk on this campus, every black woman will be at peace on this campus. If a black man says the wrong thing to you, he disrespects you. If he does anything inappropriate, you will be able to tell one of the brothers and sisters and they will be their name will be added to the book of Negroes and they will be banned. If you do not respect black women, do not come to the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy for any community events. If you do not respect the black woman, do not ever come to the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy for any community events because you will be banned and your name will be added to the book of Negroes. When you show up, we need to see your driver's license or state issued ID. I'm letting y'all know now. Don't come to this school for an event pulling out some fake hotel identification card. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. State issued ID. My Moorish brothers, I love you, but you better have a state issued ID or you're not coming in. I want to see the real name, the name you was born with, the name your paycheck has on it. That's what I want to see. Or you're not coming in here. I want to know who everybody is and where they live. That's right. I want to know who everybody is and where they live, brothers and sisters. That's what I want. Black man. If I'm going to hold you accountable, I got to hold the black woman accountable. Black man, if I'm a So, brothers, if I'm going to hold you accountable, I got to hold the sisters accountable. Black woman, don't disrespect no black man on this campus. Black woman, don't disrespect no black man on this campus, so you will be added to the book of Negroes, and you will be banned from the campus. How we doing? All right, what's up? I can't complain. But that's all for right now. It's the Prince of Pan-Africanism. I'm signing out. Peace and black power.